is a map of Rome again and found around <coughs> 111 AD. I don't know what AD but really I don't know can't remember what Pam said it was. It was shown in grey. The kind of grey. Can't remember my granny. <laughs> Don't tell us that that's your love mind. You're my nipple. <laughs> the hard part of the image was feet and clothes made of iron and clay. It represented many different green houses that rule over faces of the other empires until Christ returns to set up his kingdom. <coughs> the stone represents Christ. Christ will come to. Christ will come down and take control of the kingdoms of men. The kingdoms of men will fall apart. The kingdom of God will fill the whole earth. The kingdom, there's the kingdom there. And we will be there soon as Christ comes back. We don't know when he will come back, but it will be soon. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, chapter two 40, verses 44, In the days of the these kings shall God's heaven set up a kingdom which shall be, never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left as to other people, but shall break in pieces and consume the kingdoms of, and it shall, stand forever, sorry. And the Bible. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, this has to make it mine. And the Bible also says in Daniel chapter seven, verse twenty-seven, the kingdom of the dominion and greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven and shall be given to the people of Satan in the most high. Lessons for us. Nevertheless, this image shows us how Christ will set the kingdom up, set up God's kingdom. It helps us to believe in the kingdom of God and be set up upon the earth and we shall see the Bible. And it also helps us to try righteousness and to be part of the kingdom. So, the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Timothy. <coughs> Next on the schedule, I have the three to six year old class. Sister Joanne, are we all ready? Come on up. Please. 
kill him on the road, he saw the hurt man that was on the other side of the way. Kill him on the road. He saw the hurt man too, but he went away on the other side. A man from Samaria came along the road. He was a little like the Samaritans, but the Samaritans stopped. He the hurt man's wounds and helped his donkey. Then he took the man to an inn. The Samaritan had to leave the next day, but he used his own money to pay the innkeeper and asked him and asked him to take care of the man, and if he needed more money, he would bring it when he returned. Then Jesus asked the teacher of the law, which of the three travelers was the neighbor to the hurt man. Jesus said, Wow, that was very good. I believe y'all have a memory prayer for us as well. We don't want us to stand up on the bench here in front so we can hear you loud and clear. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Sunday School instructors. You did a lot of work with those kids. One thing I forgot to say from the beginning, uh, I wasn't the youth director this year. That was Brother Ricky Hurst. He's the one that arranged everything. I don't know why, but every year he does all the work, and then he gets me to take all the credit by leading the youth program. Maybe you can do it in the temple fine for me. Um, so next we have the seven to nine year old class that Sister Cindy Hurst led. Answer some questions on some timeline, the timeline lesson that they did this week. Okay, y'all want to stand up on the benches here in front? Can you get everyone to stand up? And Joanne's class can sit down now. Thank you very much for your presentation. You're welcome. There we go, hop up so everyone can see you.
this week we went over a timeline and we learned um, about five different stories and one of them was the tabernacle. Jacob, would you tell us about the ta tabernacle? The priest went in it. Once the high priest went in it, went in the most holy place once a year. It was covered by the curtain. And outside and in the court lot, it had an altar and a label to wash your hands. Samuel, what was inside the holy place? The the ta the table of showbread and candlestick and the altar of incense. Corinne, what is one of the symbols we learned from the tabernacle? The Ten, Command the Ten Commandments was in the most holy place and it represents it represented uh, keep uh, God's rules. Garrett, can you tell us who was Gideon? He was a judge that fought against his enemies and they had lamps in their left hand and then their trumpets in their right hand and there was pictures in front of the lamp sticks. And then they broke the pictures and they saw 300 lamps and they heard 300 trumpets and they got scared and ran away. Rebecca, can you tell us about the cycle or the time period of the judges? Well, they're, they first they did bad in the sight of the Lord and then they, um, God punished them with the enemy and then, um, so, um, then, then they were sorry, and then God forgave them and gave them a judge, and then they fought the enemy, and then they, um, then they just, just worship other idols again. The third story we learned about was Josiah. Sh Shaylee, can you tell us who was Josiah? He was a good king that started his reign whenever he was eight. And he, um, was good he was a good king because he did good and all the other kings did bad. Rachel, how is Josiah described in the Bible? Well there was no other king before him before him or after him that said that believed in God with all his heart and all his soul and all his mind. Uh, the next story we learned about was Nehemiah. Daniel Daniel, can you tell us who was Nehemiah? A cupbearer who wanted to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Rianne, what did their enemies do when they rebuilt the wall? They made fun of them and acted like they were going to fight them. Luke, what did God's people need in their hands? A sword in one hand and a tool in the other. Sword to fight back the enemies if they came, a tool to help rebuild the wall. In fact, a lot of you have bracelets on. What do you think when you see the phrase on the high bracelets, let us rise up and build? You build a wall between earth and the world to separate us from the world and the world with bad things and to be holy and be good things. Excellent job, guys. Thank you very much, Cindy. So we're going to attend a 12-year-old class. Please come up. That was Sister Julie Rhodes' class. So if you would like, you can come up and sit here, and then as I call you, come around and, and give us your part. Sitting here is fine. There you go. Oh, 
All right, the first two I have here on the list is Tony Wolf and Savannah Ford, which can give us the intro and opening verse. Could y'all come up here, please? Thank you all. Now, Joey Hall and Julian Rodriguez. We did, we did the tabernacle. The tabernacle is a place set apart. The, there were t the tent was made of animal skins, brown badger skin, ram skin dyed red, white goat hair, linen woven with blue, purple, red, and white. And there were two rooms, most holy place and holy place. Inside the most holy place was the Ark of the Covenant. The most, and within the most holy place they had the Ark of the Covenant. And within the Ark of the Covenant they had the Ten Commandments, uh, the pot of manna, and the and budding rock. Within and within the tabernacle, but within the curtain, that was the courtyard, and within the court courtyard was the altar and the and the laver where the priest would go to wash wash their hands before heading into into the, the actual tent or two rooms. So, or they'll die. So, guess that's it. Well, yeah, I believe that. Okay, next up is Tiffany Hall and Chris Redman, please. to the promised land. Um, there was a cloud that God put over the 12 tribes of Israel. And when that cloud moved, the Israelites were supposed to move. Or the 12 tribes were supposed to move. And when the cloud stopped, the 12 tribes were just stopped and set up camp. The 12 tribes se separated into three tribes on each side. The camp of Dan was on the north, the camp of Judah was on the east, the camp of Reuben was on the south, and the camp of Ephraim was on the west. Inside the 12 tribes were the Levites. The Levites camped inside from where the 12 tribes were, and inside of that was the tabernacle. Israel went into the promised land and they attacked 
the people that lived there, but not all of them. They married, when they were marrying them, they were worshipping their idols and they turned their backs to God, against God. Thank you very much. Next is Jordan Bernard and Mikey Jasanowski. about the destruction and creation of Solomon's Temple. It is commonly referred to as Solomon's Temple, even though it was a dwelling place for God. It was built right in the heart of Jerusalem, and uh, it was probably one of the most magnificent buildings of that time. Um, it had the same two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place, but the furniture inside it was much larger, and, uh, and then, but in the, in the holy place and the uh, and in the most holy place, they had, they had the original ark. When the Israelites stopped obeying God, God stopped taking care of them. He allowed the nations around them to fight against them. Most of the Babylonians killed the Israelites and took others captives, and they became slaves and servants like Nehemiah. The temple was then destroyed along with Jerusalem. Next we have Luke Prado, or Prado and Jeremy Redmond. Temple built, rebuilt by Zerubbabel, and the wall rebuilt by Nehemiah. The Jews were sorry and repented for their wickedness. They, the Jews asked God for help. Some, some of the Jews got to the. Oh. Some of the Jews got to return to Jerusalem because the Babylonians took over Jerusalem, and then the Medes and Persians took over Babylon and sent some back. They were allowed to rebuild the temple. It had two rooms, the holy place and the most holy place. It had some of the same furniture, and it wasn't as magnificent as Solomon's temple. Nehemiah was allowed to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. The enemies tried to stop them from building the wall, but they still worked hard to restore the wall in Jerusalem. <coughs> Next is Peyton Meyer and Luke Prado. Temple built by Hillid, replaced by the Otho Temple. Two rooms, most holy place and holy place. Jesus worshiped and pleads them. The Jews, became, the Jews became so wicked they killed Christ. The Romans destroyed the Jews. Many were killed, others were scattered across the earth. Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. No other temple has been no other temples have been built. All right, and next we have Kyle Hall, um, otherwise known as Bob, and Jacob Hendershot.
The kingdom described by Ezekiel will be set up when Christ returns. It will be located on Mount Zion with Jerusalem as the capital. It will cover over 56 miles square. The actual temple will be on the southern border of the kingdom. It will be an outer range of buildings, great, a great tower at each corner, also a circular range of buildings on the inside and an altar at the top, at the top of Mount Zion. The signs of Christ's return. The Jews will be regathered and made a nation again. They have already became a nation and God is regathering them now. The author, as the, and preachers are teaching false doctrines. Today there are many wrong teachings being taught. There is also an increase in travel and not. Today we have cars, trains, and airplanes to get around the world and we have even more knowledge than before because of the internet. There is also an increase in immorality, men and women living together and not being married and homosexual. And also, more kids are being disobedient to parents as well as God. And there are more lovers of money and lovers of money are willing to do any much more evil to get money. And there are also true Spreakers and false accusers. Lawsuits have skyrocketed. And there are also despisers of those that are good. And people want good people to do evil just like them. There are also lovers of pre pre pleasures more than lovers of God. And people wanting more and more and never being happy. Is Katie. Next is Katie Somerville and Billy Wolf. because pleasures can rob our lives, such as going on the internet. Be careful to think of others because it's easy to be selfish, such as thinking only of what you want and not doing what other people want or what God wants. Be careful to remember God even when times are good. This doesn't mean you won't have bad times, but if you do, remember God, He'll always be there for you. Be careful to do what's right because it's easy to do what's wrong, like the worldly people. Be thankful for our blessings that we'll always just want more like a spoiled bread. Be careful to love and obey God because He takes care of His children just like the Israelites. Uh, uh, next is Alyssa Hurst and Elizabeth Bernard. What we learn from Nehemiah, to have purpose and faith like Nehemiah did when he wanted to build the wall, to be determined and persistent even when times are rough, to be considered about others and be helpful, not just think about your own needs. Have charity and patience. Like Nehemiah had charity and patience with the Israelites when they rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. Be courageous and brave in doing God's work. Stand steadfast against those that would hinder progress. And take care of God's house and his family, like Nehemiah did. I think everyone has a closing verse for us, everyone in this class. Tony and Savannah have the poster for that one. 